Ruptured uterus. The worst thing a doctor told my expecting mother. Disabled. The worst thing the doctor called me. And as words leaked from his lips, hope hemorrhaged from parents' hearts, sending shockwaves through families and turning potential into broken dreams, declaring I am going nowhere because living is impossible because miracles can only be built on able hands and these were made to hold lifetimes. So I've been hiding them, sticking them in pockets and staring at my feet until I can twist them into something that looks real. I don't want to be real. I would rather spend days sitting on top shelf of trophy cases as something to be admired or laying beneath the feet of people as a welcome mat, ready to guide the world into somewhere amazing. Maybe then they would understand. I try not to imagine what my parents went through, that chaos that ensued when they tried to pull me from the darkness, when they sliced my mother open, laid me on the table, stuck the tubes where they fit, trying to complete some real life puzzle, make me real, while father stands just outside, Unsure whether to watch his first love on the silver table being reverse dissected, or his only son with machines breathing for him, pumping blood through a body that was supposed to last more than a day, his only son silently screaming because the tubes make sound impossible. I try not to wonder if the doctor wanted to euthanize me still feeling the weight of previous centuries and the sting of social expectations that can never be expected to complete. I try not to remember the history of depression, the late nights trying to bend my fingers straight while fighting the urges of wanting to euthanize myself, carving poetry into fa fragile wrists and keeping tally marks of the days I've had to survive. They said I would never walk or talk or do anything for myself as though a god I would never believe in grabbed my neck and said, sorry kid, ain't no place for you. But I didn't listen. And my, and my parents know all too well how I would rather try and fail, and try and fail, and try and succeed because there's nothing you can do that I can't. I'm applauded for doing the simple things I love with all my heart, I walk, I talk, I tie my own shoes, or at least I tie knots in the strings and try to avoid the embarrassment of my friend having to tie them for me. There's nothing you can do that I can't. And I'm ready to do it while dodging glances on the streets as though they were shrapnel, feeling eyes stab like rusty nails through a heart made of gold. And there's a fire burning in this body a young mind spending a lifetime trying to free itself from this prison, only to realize it's home. Thank you. So, for the original version of this poem, I published it on my website, and someone came and told me it sucked. And this is like right before uh, the final round for my poetry competition. So I wrote a response to him and performed it at the finals and got third place. So this is my response to him. Ruptured uterus. The worst thing that the doctor can call an expecting a mother. Disabled. The worst thing the doctor can call her child. Cripple. A word that has tortured me ever since. I put my heart on my sleeve and my guts on the stage. Wrote words I've feared for all my life in hopes that you would understand. And you did hundreds of you. But as I spread my story into the world of faceless bloggers, the response was less accepting, less understanding. For as my soul spread over those thin wires, his response came crawling back, declaring I am a cripple, a deformed, defective, debilitated cripple. But sir, I am not defenseless. I am real. And I am a poet. I am not just some story that my mother tells my sister. I've spent years watching the world do things that I couldn't do. 
I've, I've had words cut like knives, leaving tally marks on these wrists of the days I've been alive. Days this deformed body has held this crystal mind captive. But the years I spent watching were well, the years I spent writing. And the cuts have healed and toughened the skin where they once laid. So, but still his words can crawling. Cripple. You stupid cripple. Your poem sucks. You're going nowhere. Now listen, <laughs> sir. I know I'm a cripple. I have a reminder embedded in my hands, embedded in the eyes of every new person I meet, and in the memories. Memories of not belonging while parents promised my time would come. Memories of coaches putting me in the game only when I can't possibly screw things up. But my time is here because the words that have leaked through the holes in this heart have become a cornerstone for a new team where the points are not the point because the memories we create last longer than the victories we achieve. So listen, sir, call me a cripple, but you're the one sitting at home while I'm out telling my story to the world. Poetry saved this poet. Thank you.